So what we've learned so far about COVID-19 and cystic fibrosis is that there isn't any evidence to suggest that people with CF are more likely to contract COVID-19. But what we do know, because they have severe lung disease, they are at more risk to have severe effects of COVID on their lungs. And that's why we really want people with CF to stay home. What we've learned so far from talking to people across the world is that very few people with CF have actually contracted the disease. In fact, right now, I know of less than 50 across the world. And only one death has occurred, and that was in a 50-year-old man who unfortunately had to continue to work and be very closely involved with the public, so probably had high levels of exposure. And he had severe lung disease to start out with as well. But overall, people with CF aren't contracting it frequently, probably because they're used to staying home and staying six feet away from other people. Generally, people have only experienced mild symptoms with cystic fibrosis and COVID-19, and we're not exactly sure why. I think one issue may be, again, related to the fact that people with CF are very used to following infection control practices. So they're very used to washing their hands frequently, they're used to staying six feet apart from other people, and they're used to staying home when they're worried about people being sick around them and avoiding those sick people. So they may have a much lower inoculum. In other words, they just don't get as much exposure to the virus overall. The other issue may be, especially here in the U.S., is that there was a recent approval in October of 2019, a very highly effective CFTR modulator, Trikafta or Alexacaftor, Tezacaftor, Ivacaftor. And that actually improved people's lung function substantially. And anecdotally, we've heard people say they tolerate viral illness much better on Trikafta. Now, in Europe and Australia, and the UK, they don't really have wide access yet to Trikafta, so that can't explain why people aren't as sick or getting only mild symptoms with COVID over in those other countries. I think that there, it may be because of the azithromycin that people are on chronically with CF, in addition to the fact that people are used to following infection control measures. We know that there was a small study from France where people were treated with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and there were a lot of problems with that study, but we know that azithromycin does actually have in vitro activity against other viruses, and it has been used as an anti-inflammatory, so it could be a factor that's protective. But the short answer is we're not quite sure why people with CF are tolerating COVID better than we expected them to. So during the pandemic, it's been complicated to take care of people with CF. The CF Foundation actually recommends that people with CF be seen quarterly at their CF centers for comprehensive care. And obviously, we don't want people to become at risk of contracting COVID by going out into the public. So a lot of centers have moved to telehealth. There are some centers that aren't equipped for that, and they're just doing simple phone calls, but many, many centers are actually using telehealth to manage their patients, give them advice about their baseline medications and anything that they need to change because of mild symptoms of COVID. If someone contracts COVID and they have CF, I think for the most part, their treatments may not change that much, especially if they just have mild symptoms. If it's only a mild cough and a little bit of fever, they would manage that the way somebody else without CF would manage it. So they would take Tylenol or Advil. If they started to have increased symptoms, we'd have them increase their therapies. Most people with CF actually do airway clearance at least once a day, if not twice, depending on how severe their disease is. And at times of illness, we ask people with CF to increase their airway clearance and aerosol therapy. So if they had a little bit more moderate symptoms, but still not enough to cause them to go to the hospital or go to clinic, we would just have them increase their airway clearance. We may need to treat them with some oral antibiotics. With COVID-19, there's been a lot of question about what the best way is to manage people's oxygen needs. There was concern that if you use something like non-invasive ventilation, BiPAP, or high flow oxygen, that you might disperse COVID throughout the room. So we try to avoid those generally, but if someone really needs that and we are trying to avoid intubating them in the hospital, we can put someone in a negative pressure room where the air exchange is frequently turned over. And we also can use very, very efficient 
personal protective gear by the physicians and other people that have to go in the room. So in other words, anybody who entered the room when someone was using non-invasive ventilation or using high flow oxygen would have to be in full gear with coverings of their body, their clothes, their eyes, and their mouth with an N95 mask or something called a papper where they cover their entire head and aren't able to breathe the air in the room. They're breathing it through a filter.